All right, so this can be the first iteration on a series of Arma 3 scripting tutorials. And starting off, we're just going to be very basic, showing you how to get your mission set up to where you can actually start working. And in this video as well, we're going to cover variables, local variables, and kind of get an explanation on pretty much how to pass a variable to another script if you wanted to use it, just for an example. And so here we already have a mission set up. It has been saved as the tutorial mission under MP missions. Now in order to find this, open up your file explorer, go to documents, armor 3, MP missions, and you will see it right here. If you save it under a single player mission, it will just be under missions. So once we go in here, the only file we should have is mission.sqm. Now in order to really kind of start actually being able to do stuff, we have to make what is called SQF files, which is, as you can see over here, what Arma 3 uses. They also use SQS, but we will not be touching any of that. You can see on the event scripts, you have a list of pretty much what is going to run at the mission start or on a specific term. Is what I, is pretty much what's going to consider, it's going to tell itself to run pretty much when the conditions are met. So we have the init.sqf, and it says under the description, this is executed when the mission is started, before the briefing screen. And we also have down here, init player local. And this is executed locally when a player joins the mission. And I will be getting into this one here shortly, hopefully at the end of this video. Now, for the init.sqf, in order to actually create it, just right click, go to new, just make a new text document, and call it init then just save as and change the type to all types and then just init.sqf now we have two files here text document and an sqf file just delete the text document and open the init.sqf now this is going to be running on the very start of the mission so if you were to do anything this would pretty much run right off the bat now we have variables as of right now, we're just going to be using integers and booleans. As well as at the end, we're going to be discussing local and global. So, first we'll make a global variable, which you can always tell by, well, if you have the SQF um, highlighter installed in Notepad++, it will appear just like this text. My variable equals 3. If you notice the color, it's kind of got a purplish tint, and it's italicized. Now if you were to create a local variable, you would always use underscore my variable equals three. It kind of looks more normal. It's got a grayish color to it as well as it's just not italicized. Now if I'm, ugh, my variable equaling three, you can do a couple of things with this. So if you wanted to make, for instance, a little kill counter, you would just set my kills to zero and you can make a, an event handler and on that event handler you could use one that's called killed so it runs every time the player is killed and when that happens inside the code you would just increment this up so it would be my kills equals my kills plus one but for now just make a variable called my variable now we will print out the variable just hint string my variable now what this does is, normally for a hint, you would have to make it in quotation marks, which kind of indicates that it's a string. So hint, if we want to get the same result, we would have to hint zero. And this would just print out zero to the screen for the user to see. But since this is a technically an integer zero, we are going to have to use string, which converts it, well, just to a string. Think of it like that. So when we save it, we go back into Arma 3, and we run our mission. At the top right, you see it printed out the variable zero. Now, local variables work in a similar manner, but you have what is called the namespace. And pretty much, if you were to make this here, my local variable, just set it to zero, you could use it the exact same way. And it would also print out zero. as shown there. But if you have another file, 
We'll just go ahead and make another SQF file. Just name it test. Now if we try to, if I can click right. Now we're going to execute test. So once the mission loads, it's going to run into init.sqf. It's going to execute test.sqf right after these variables have been initialized. Then in here, we can just print out that string, my local variable. But it will throw an error that is a, that is unknown, as you will see why here in a second. See, unknown variable, and it doesn't print anything out. That's because it's local to this script only. So that means my local variable is only accessible from the init.sqf. Now my variable on the other hand, since it is considered a global variable, if you were to go to pretty much any file and try to hint it out, it will print up at the top right without any issue, as so. So that's kind of the general idea of local and global variables. Now if you wanted to take my local variable and pass it to test.sqf so it could use it, you would have to use parameters. And for the exe CV, yeah, exe CVM, just do null equals open and closing square brackets. Now what's going to be in these brackets is what you want to pass to the script. So if I even wanted to pass something as simple as just my own random string, my message it would execute test.sqf and pass in this string here that we would be able to use. But since we want to pass in my local variable right here, that equals zero, I'll just go ahead and change this to three just so it's a little bit different. We would put my local variable inside of the square brackets. And that's going to indicate to this command here that it is going to execute test.sqf while sending it this variable. So let's go ahead and save that and go over here. Now in order to use this, we cannot simply just do that, as it will run into the unknown variable just as it did before. But you have to use, I believe they're just called arguments, but pretty much what you would have to do to get access to it is my argument equals this select zero. Now. What this pretty much is going to do is, you will see here, in the init player local, for example, on the first one, it is the player. And the second one is, did the player join in progress? So that just mean after the mission has started, did they join? But this is pretty much what's going to be at the top of the scripts. So if we had this here was init player local, we would do this right here, and if we change it to unit, now unit is equal to the player that, it's just literally equal to the player, if that makes any sense at all. But, so pretty much this is how you're going to pass them over. So you pass an array, which is what's in these square brackets. You can pass multiple that are being separated by a comma. We would pass in my string. So we have my local variable being the first one, my string being the second one. So my argument will be equal to zero, which is the first one since computers generally will count from zero and upwards. So zero, one, two, three, and so on. So if we wanted to get access to where it said my string, we would create just another variable, string equals this select one. So now we have string is equal to my string. So as you can see by using the select command, it's how we get access to it. As you will see here, array select index. So the array name is going to be this as it refers to test.sqf. Select is going to select an element of the array so we 
we have, for instance, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Since we start at 0, just in this order, if we were to if we were to do array select 1, it would grab 1 out of this array specifically and store it in my value. This is doing the exact same thing. This is the array pretty much of the script. It's what it's what it's already holding. And since we passed in my local variable and my string, it's going to be 0 and 1 as shown here. So that's another way to easily kind of visualize it. So if we go ahead and hint well, change the names. So we're going to go ahead and hint my argument, which should be which should output 3 since it is my local variable that is getting passed. As you see up there, it prints 3. We go back, we go ahead and we just print string right here, which should equal my string. And it says my string. So that's just a general idea on how you would take a variable that is local to a script and pass it to another one. And that's going to be the end for this one, and there will be more in the future, kind of building up on difficulty.